in this video, I'm going to show you why you would want to get the light extra close and in your frame and how you can remove it in Photoshop. So you're probably wondering why would I want to get the light extra close and include it in my frame? One of the reasons is, is if you get the light close, obviously you're going to get that nice soft light. You're going to get that extra punch of light as well. But the only issue is, is that it's going to be included in your frame. Now, depending on your composition. So for me, for example, with this horse photo shoot that I had with a client, I had to get the light close because I wanted that extra punch of light and I wanted it to be nice and soft. So my only solution, because my composition was wide, was to include it in my frame. In order to get it out of the frame, what you have to do is a two shot process where you go ahead and photograph with it in the frame and you go ahead and hold the camera in the same position and tell your assistant to get out of the frame and take another shot, essentially with no strobe light. So go ahead, let me go ahead and show you what that actually looks like. So here, what you're going to see is my friend Roland getting the light close. I'm setting up the shot. He's going to get it close. I'm going to nail my first shot. I'm going to tell him to get out of the frame. And once he gets out of the frame, I'm going to take my second shot. So that's what it would look like with the camera. Here are the shots for that particular shot. Here you'll see that this is the shot where I got the light close into the frame so I can illuminate the subject or the model in this case. And then the second shot, as you saw there, you'll see that now the light is completely out of the frame and now the model doesn't have any light. What we're going to do is we're going to combine both of those images in Photoshop and make it look seamless. And so that it looks awesome as a final image. Now, one key thing when you're doing that process is when you're doing your first shot is to set up your camera, get it in frame, get your composition, get the lighting the way you want, and you're going to hold the camera as still as possible to get your first shot with the light in the frame. Now, keep in mind when you get the second shot, you can't zoom in on the camera, zoom in and out. You can't be moving around like this for your second shot because what's going to happen is in Photoshop, the pictures are not going to line up perfectly. And you'll see in a moment in one of my shots, I did move a little bit. I was able to fix it. You know, it didn't hurt the image too bad, but you don't want to go too crazy like this. If you go too crazy and start zooming in, yeah, like I, you've already messed it up. And yeah, it's a goner. You kind of defeated the whole purpose. Now, if you're wondering, hey, can I use a tripod? I think tripod's going to be too much work in my opinion. Just try to hold the camera still, get your first shot. Tell your assistant to get out of the frame and then you're going to go ahead and get your second shot and then you should be able to match them up perfectly. So let's go ahead and match up these two images in Photoshop so I can show you how it's done. So now that I got my images and you go ahead and import them, you can, you know, import it into Lightroom Capture One, Camera Raw, whatever your preference is. Now, one of the key things when you're in whatever software you're using, is to copy the same settings on both images. So in this particular image, I went ahead and I went to my develop module and I made my adjustments, whether it's white balance, exposure, contrast, highlights, vibrance, etc. Once I have that, I want to make sure I copy those same settings to my next image so that when I stitch them together in Photoshop, the colors, the exposure kind of match up together. Once you have your scene, I'm going to do about three different pictures. I have another uh, photo shoot that I use this technique and I'll show you in a little bit. You want to go ahead and open them individually in Photoshop. Once you've done that, I'm going to go ahead and open up Photoshop. Here, I'm going to work on this image first. What you're going to do is you're going to have them obviously in separate tabs. And here's another scenario that I just showed you. There's this one and Here's another image with the light and then another one that I recently did where I was at, um, I was going to say Ruby Tuesday, um, my gosh, Johnny Rockets and there was a lot of tables. I really wanted this nice soft light and I wanted to shoot a little bit wide, but in order to get that soft light, like as I mentioned at the beginning, I have to get the light close. It was in my frame. So I instructed my friend Omar to get the light in the frame and I'll probably include a video as I'm saying this and I'll have him get the light close get the shot with that nice, beautiful soft light and then have him get out of the frame 
so that I can stitch it together. So with that said, let's get to the part with Photoshop where we're going to stitch the images together. Here, what you're going to do is you're going to have both of the images. You're going to get the move tool in Photoshop, which is the first tool on the top. You're going to click and drag the one with the light in the frame. So here I have my friend Roland with the Magmod. I'm going to drag this one to the image that doesn't have Roland or the light in the frame. And here you have got it placed right here. And now once you get the light or both images together, what you're going to do is you're going to hold control on the keyboard or shift so you can select both layers. So I'm going to go ahead and select both of them. Once I have them both selected, you have to have the move tool selected. And at the very top, you're going to see, and I'm going to hover my mouse over it. It's going to say auto align layers. If we're using an older version of Photoshop, it used to have a face. So whatever um, version you have, you'll just go to the top and it'll be the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and click this little icon here. Here it says projection. I'm going to choose auto so we can kind of auto align. What it's basically essentially going to do is it's going to find the same horizon lines and same kind of areas that are the same and match up the pictures and kind of merge them. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And this will take a couple of seconds, depending how fast your computer is. And once that's done, and give it some time here. And do, 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 do. there we go. And you can see here that I moved a little bit. This is what I was talking about. If you move too much, your picture is not going to align up perfectly. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go and go to layer one, which is the layer. If I kick the eyeball is the one with the light. Essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a layer mask so that I can mask out that light. What I'll do is I'll go to layer one. I'll click the layer mask button, which is down here. It says add layer mask. It's going to be white. White means that that not doing anything particular to that, that specific layer. It's still showing because white means it's revealing. What I want to do is I want to remove it. So I'm going to do the opposite now and I'm going to get the brush tool. I'm going to set it to black. We're going to make sure that up here at the very top that we're going to have a soft brush, a soft round brush, the hardness at zero, opacity 100, flow 100 and smoothing at zero. I got to make sure I have clicked on the layer mask and I'm going to gradually, slowly start erasing that little portion. You'll see that I have a line up here and I got a line over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the edge of the circle. I'm not going to get the middle part of the brush. So I have two options. I can either use the edge or just make my brush smaller. So I'm going to press the left bracket on the keyboard, make it smaller. And then I'm going to go ahead and use the edge of the brush so that I can just gradually blend these two pictures together. Because what you want to do is you want to make it look seamless and you want to make it look cohesive. And so I'm going to go ahead and gradually remove this one as well. And now the picture has been stitched perfectly. So if I click this little, little eyeball, I could go in here and kind of remove some of this if I wanted to. I'm just doing this quick as a demo, but once again, you guys can go in there and erase any other particular parts that maybe look a little bit off. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and crop because I did move a little bit, right? And I'm going to get the crop tool. I'm going to go ahead and lift this up because obviously these little squares means that that's a transparent background. It means this background's non-existent. I'm going to bring it right about here, double click, and there's my crop. Now my picture is a little bit lopsided. I have a bad habit of doing that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get the crop tool. I'm going to get the straighten. I'm going to click and then drag so I get this horizon line perfectly straight. And I'm going to go ahead and move this across here and double click and there you go. Voila. Now I've just shown you how to achieve the awesome soft light. And let me crop this in a little bit. There you go. And now I've shown you how to crop and add that nice little soft light using the two shot technique. I'm going to go ahead and do another two images. So if you kind of want to see uh, this one more time, I'm going to go a little bit quicker. So here I'm going to get the image with the light. I'm going to click and then drag the light on top. Now this one I did a better job of not moving as much. So I'm going to hold control to select both of them. I can also hold shift 
I'm going to go back up here with the move tool, click the auto align, make sure it's on auto, hit OK. And here it's going to take a couple of seconds here. And there we go. We're going to go to layer one, which is the one with the light. I'm going to add the layer mask. It's going to be white, which is fine. I'm going to get the brush. We're going to make sure it's black so that we can remove that particular part. Make sure we're on a soft brush. 100 opacity, flow 100, smoothing at zero. And I'm going to make a smaller brush, so I'm going to remove the light. There we go. And that's it. I'm just removing my assistant there, Roland. And there we go. So you can see I was off a little bit, so I'm just going to get the crop tool. I'm going to crop it in just a little bit there, lift it up ever so slightly. And bam, I already got another image done. And let's do one more. I'm going to go ahead and do the one that I recently did with Najla. I'm going to get the move tool, drag the image where I had Omar and the light, drag it on top of the other image. I'm going to hold control to select both of them. I'm going to click the auto align, hit auto, hit OK. The images will once again auto align perfectly. I'm going to go to layer one, add the layer mask. Brush tool set to black, soft, 100, 100. And now I'm going to go ahead and remove Omar. There we go. And once I've done that, I'll just get the crop tool. Crop in just a little bit. And one thing I forgot to mention, guys, is once you actually finish cropping and auto aligning everything, you'll still have layer one, layer zero. This is where you're going to go to layer and then flatten image. So basically, you can start editing your image in Photoshop, assuming you do your high end retouching in Photoshop. In my case, that's what I do. I'll do my dodge and burn, my uh, blemish removal, my frequency separation, and also my color grading and all that stuff. All right, guys, that's it for this tutorial. This was a little quick tip video. Don't forget to subscribe. I have more videos coming out soon. And if you guys use this technique, please tag me on Instagram. I would love to see what you guys come up with using this technique. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.